I had a commenter suggest I make a video comparing the Polestar 3 to the Fisker Ocean. No sweat, except nobody's ever driven either one. So, does that make it hard? Yes. Does it make it subjective? Certainly. Am I biased? 10 reasons why the Fisker Ocean SUV is the best electric vehicle available in 2023. Please believe it, but I can try. So, this will be an attempt to compare the Polestar 3 to the Fisker Ocean in an unbiased manner. Let's get into it. Oh, and if you want to hear the biased version, stick around to the end, I'll give you one. I came up with a bunch of categories that I think I can make a call one way or the other for right now. Some variables are independent, some may be more mutually exclusive, but all of it can be scored and counted. So that said, feel free to play along at home. and Let me know your score down in the comments below. Pen and paper ready? First is sport. Sport is not a trim of the Fisker Ocean. It is a descriptive word of a vehicle, and it can be interpreted in many ways. But I can picture an SUV when I think of sport, and that's what I'll do for each one of these categories, is I will picture an SUV that comes to mind when I think of that word. That way you can kind of float along on the same page with me, and then I'll declare a winner. So for sport, to me this is a Bronco 2, or maybe a Suzuki Samurai. You're off the ground a little bit, you can toss it around, Sport is kind of like a little brother when it comes to SUVs. If the big guy can do it, well, the little guy certainly can too. It's a personality trait. The Polestar wants to be taken way too seriously to be considered a sport. And my argument objectively to back that up is that the Polestar is bigger than the Fisker Ocean in every category except for height. So even though the Fisker Ocean wins this category, that's kind of a plus for the Polestar from an engineering standpoint. One nothing ocean. Next, utility. When I think of utility, I think of a Chevy Suburban. I've owned one, a Yukon XL actually, but they are literally the same car with a different badge. So that's the benchmark here. It is rumored that the ground clearance of the Fisker Ocean is eight and a half inches. It is true that the ground clearance of the Polestar 3 is 8.3 inches, and that's solid for the segment. The Ocean says 4,000 pound towing capacity, and the Polestar 3 says 3,500 pounds. Rear storage also looks like, based on early estimates, could be a slim win for the Fisker Ocean. If the 4,000 pounds is true, then you've got to give utility to the ocean as well. Two nothing Fisker. Let's talk about design. There's no real benchmark here when I think of design as far as SUVs, but I will say these two SUVs look better than anything on the road right now that's not a car, because cars always win in design, in my opinion. But when we dig deep into the design of the Polestar 3, I'm just going to put the guy on screen. This is Maximilian Missoni, and if I pronounced it wrong, then it's... Maximilian Missoni. But regardless of how you say it, it's a cool name. And this is a bad dude. Not like your mom or dad would say about the kid you hung out with in sixth grade that was probably gonna teach you some bad habits, but more like the video game you played in sixth grade by the same name. In fact, bad dudes is how I would describe Maximilian Masani and <clears throat> Henrik Fisker when it comes to design. So much so that even though I'm so into the design of the Fisker Ocean, and I believe it's the best designed SUV to date period. And my money is where my mouth is, my deposit is in. I also love the Polestar 1, 2, and 3 when it comes to design. And the 3 looks way more like the 1 than I ever thought possible for an SUV. So, and I know you're going to be mad here, design is a tie. And yes, this is what the comments section is for. Let me know your opinion down below. Don't just tell me how much Tell me why. On to comfort. My benchmark, ML55 AMG. When I saw that first Mercedes SUV in Jurassic Park 2, I believe it was, that feeling never went away, and it changed my opinion of Mercedes kind of forever. And I also think it's part of the reason we all drive SUVs now. But then I saw an ML55 in person, and that was it. The same feeling that vehicle gave me in a movie, it gave me in real life. I thought somebody had done a partial badge delete I'd never seen only two numbers on the back of a Mercedes SUV before. I had to Google it, and it was real. And it may not be the most comfortable SUV ever, but boy did Mercedes convince me that it was. Fisker's thing is sustainability. Recycled, reduced, reused, efficient. I've sat in the ocean. I've also sat in a modern Volvo. My guess, this is a win for Polestar. Fisker went renewable. Polestar spared no expense. At this point, out of fairness, I would also like to note that Polestar has disclosed the source of a lot of its battery materials as well as used many recycled materials on the interior of the Polestar 3. Just trying not to be biased. How about exclusivity? My brain goes to an Urus, if that's how you pronounce it. Urus. Urus. My heart tells me Bentiaga. Bentega. Bentley Bentega. Bentley Bentega. 
Both are good benchmarks when it comes to exclusivity, both being equally hard to pronounce when it comes to regional correctness. I think Polestar wants a win here for exclusivity. It is technically a startup, so check that box. But the Ocean is the brand's launch vehicle. The Ocean is the Polestar 1 to Fisker. And it's an exclusive launch trim, only 5,000. And 5,000 people have their money in to get it. And they're going to be the only ones. Fisker wins this one. Easy work. On to luxury. Is luxury comfort? Is luxury exclusivity? No. Luxury is a feeling. This is why Tesla gets heat for calling the Model 3 and the Model Y luxury. There's nothing in there but two stocks and a screen and maybe a emergency flasher button. But the seats though, the navigate on autopilot, and you may think the Model Y isn't luxury, and you're definitely right in some ways. So it can be argued. My benchmark for luxury is a 1999 BMW X5. This was not a truck without a bed, which is what we expected in 1999 when somebody said SUV. This was a 5 Series with ground clearance. This was a revolution in luxury. And if luxury was a feeling, it could be expressed on the faces of those riding in that 1999 BMW X5 because they were going to skip the line to get in when they got out. So, what is luxury? A rotating screen? A solar roof? Maybe. What else? 25 speakers. That's luxury. The Polestar boasts an ionizer for the HVAC. Real leather seats. It's not sustainable. It's despicable. Just like luxury should be. Polestar gets the point. I've got a feeling about it. Let's talk handling, which once again is going to be a guess because nobody's driven either one of these SUVs. But that doesn't mean it can't be an educated guess. When I think of handling for an SUV, Porsche McCann comes to mind. Size, pedigree, it fits. Alfa Romeo Stelvio comes to mind. It's probably solid in the twisties. Audi SQ5 checks the boxes for SUV handling. That said, the Polestar has an air suspension. It raises and lowers automatically based on road conditions. It's longer and wider, yet not as tall as the ocean. Plus, it's engineered from what would basically be a mountain of intellectual property from Volvo. I gotta give the point to Polestar for handling. And yes, I know, I've never driven either one. On to technology, buttons or screens, phones or fobs, apps and updates, packs and plugs. Technology is everywhere inside of both of these SUVs. When I think of technology for an SUV, there's nowhere to turn but the Tesla Model X. This thing had all that stuff in 2015. You walk up to it, you're in. Plug it in, you're done. Update it from your phone, century mode, the list goes on. Polestar 3 has a heads-up display. Android Automotive with an AMD chip is cool, but no Android Auto? Yes, Android Automotive and Android Auto are two different things, and no, Android Automotive products, at least from Polestar so far, don't have Android Auto. Fisker's digital radar is cool. Polestar 3's LiDAR is cool. The solar roof takes it though. Even if only 20% of oceans manufactured will have the solar roof, that is cooler than all the rest of it. Point Fisker. Features, we've already talked about some of this, but it's a whole thing. Solar roof, rotating screen, California mode, limo mode. Sick. But how many oceans are gonna end up with all those? Like I just mentioned. Spoiler, a small percentage. The good news is they're going up against Polestar, and if the Polestar 2 is any indicator, Polestar wants to make it financially prohibitive to get all of the features that they offer. I think the Polestar 3 kind of comes with all of it, but it is 80K. It ought to. LiDAR, forged wheels, it's got cool stuff. Oh yeah, features, benchmark. Land Rover, intelligent fold rear seats. That's what I think of when I think of features. But what I can't think of is a winner in this category. So, tie. Quality. I've got two words. Land Cruiser. That's a quality SUV. And I know most of you think Toyota is boring. I think Toyota is boring, and I own a Toyota. That's fine. Some people like boring for cars, investments, houses, neighborhoods, spouses, you name it. The Land Cruiser is a retail investor with nothing but index funds. Or a husband who's never late and never misses work. Or that husband's wife who takes care of the kids, works full time, does the laundry, does all the cleaning and tidying, and all the PTA stuff. Hence the husband's promptness and punctuality. The wife, in this scenario, drives the Land Cruiser, by the way. And nobody's ever called her boring in her entire life. The husband, of course, drives a BMW 330i. But it's a 2017, so it's almost time to trade up. And when he does, 
I bet he gets a Polestar 3. That's how he's gonna celebrate his new promotion. The wife is never getting rid of the Land Cruiser, though. Point Polestar. The reasons the Fisker won the exclusivity point are the same reasons the Polestar 3 wins the quality point. This is the launch vehicle, so you can't have an expectation for the absolute highest quality. Even with Magna, every launch vehicle is exactly that. A launch vehicle. And there's expectations and historical data to go with that. Practicality. Polestar claims 300 miles of range, EPA. Fisker claims 350. The headroom in the ocean is literally hard to believe. If I think of a practical SUV, I think of a 1991 S10 Blazer. Not this Blazer, this Blazer. It had a decent size area to just throw stuff in. And it had a decently small footprint. Plus it had that abominable 4.3 liter V6. I think the ocean will be that Blazer for a lot of families. So, point Fisker, but what tips the scale its way as far as practicality? Is it price? Is it headroom? No, it's the fact that that rear window goes all the way down. Talk to me, dog owners. You know what I'm talking about. That's old school practicality if I ever saw it. Value. Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4. That's SUV value. I don't need to argue this one, do I? All I have to say is three words Fisker, Ocean, Ultra. The base Polestar 3 is how much? Point Fisker. Marketing. The best SUV marketing ever has obviously been Joe Azuzu. He was a straight shooter. And if Joe Azuzu was a straight shooter, then the Fisker Ocean is a jackpot on a gray machine in the back of a convenience store in Salt Lake City. You knew it was going to be a jackpot, but the owner who rigged that machine to only pay out 0.1% never saw it coming. The Polestar 3 was unveiled less than a week ago, and I know more about it than a Fisker Ocean. And I've been inside a Fisker Ocean. I drove 450 miles to see a Fisker Ocean, and I still know more about the Polestar 3 than I do about the Fisker Ocean. This strategy has made Fisker a lot of reservations. It's also saved them a lot of money when it comes to marketing. But if I'm thinking consumer experience versus marketing, I don't know if reservation holders of an ocean have had a top tier experience. Point, Polestar. Finally, how about fun? I'll use an anecdote for this one. I had a buddy in high school who was convinced that every boy or girl who owned a CJ7 Jeep could create their own luck. Neither one of us had jobs. We were on the high school swim team, so we weren't getting one. But there we were on the bus on the way home from a swim meet debating the magical powers of the Jeep CJ7. I learned vicariously through him the animalistic passion that radiates through the throne of danger that is the driver's seat of a CJ7. And I could argue using every stat, figure, and objective measurement known to man that in 99.9% .9 of cases, the CJ7 is a near useless vehicle. But I can also admit that driving one would be super fun. There's a clear winner in fun factor between these two vehicles as well. The Polestar 3 may turn out to have a lot of appeal, but the looks you get from people of all ages when you pull up in an SUV from a brand they've never heard of, is priceless. And other than you watching this video, those of you who watch my channel, no one else has ever heard of a Fisker Ocean SUV. So that's the comparison. How did we do on points total? Did we win? Let's tally them up. Let me know what you think of the Polestar 3 in the comments. I'll leave the website down in the description so you can take a look at it. Make sure you subscribe for more, plenty more Ocean videos to come. It's really getting close to that start of production, SOP, whatever you want to call it. I've been excited about it and I'll keep you excited with all the up-to-date news. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Smash the like button. Thank you. Oh, you think I forgot about the biased version? I most certainly did not. The ocean is bigger inside, but on a smaller footprint. Toesmore is designed by Henrik Fisker himself, is super comfortable, the most exclusive, has more features and technology. It's being built by Magna in the same factory as the G-Wagon. Will be way more fun and luxurious to drive, will handle like a dream, and doesn't cost $80,000 US. There. I said it. Sorry, not sorry. We now resume our regularly scheduled outro. Subscribe, y'all.